Hello everybody, uh, I'm here to present the uh, Science product. I'm Xavi, Xavi Hernández. I come from Barcelona, Spain, and I work at Sayos, that is a company that makes uh, virtual reality for phobia treatments, and we do it with Blender. Okay, so that's why I wanted to show uh, to the Blender community how we do the environments, how we do the product, and to explain a little bit uh, how, what is our history. Uh, as a startup, when we started three years ago, and I will be talking about a little about fears and phobias, because there is a lot of people who doesn't understand really what is a phobia. I, mean, I wasn't, I didn't know what is a phobia before working with Sayus. Uh, the vision that the uh, founders of Sayus had to how to make uh, phobia treatments which we are available for everybody and talking about virtual reality, of course, Blender. And later on, on the presentation, I will do some, some tricks I learned these years with uh, Blender, how to improve the workflow to develop fast and cheap. Uh, it's a similar uh, as a game production. So I will start talking about phobias. I found out this, this guy on Google, so this guy is supposed to have a phobia. <laughs> Phobias are not just fears. Uh, people tend to think that, uh, yeah, I have a phobia because I'm afraid of spiders, you know? But uh, phobia is not just a fear. Fear is like uh, you're scared a little bit, like me. I'm scared of it, about public speaking, you know? It's not easy. I'm uncomfortable right now, but I can do it. I don't have a phobia. A phobia guy will be here super shy. He won't be able to talk at all. She will be paralyzed. His brain will be nuts, you know? Uh, I met people that uh, had really tough problems on his life, girl, that uh, crashed his car, her car, uh, because she saw a spider on the windshield. She lost control of the car and she crashed. So that for me is a phobia. When you cannot control your body, reactions when you are facing your, your specific phobia. There is also a lot of phobias, you know, there is people who have phobia to olives, for example, that they can eat an olive and they can die because of the nut. So this is a, is a, is a common problem. Most of the people have some kind of phobia in some kind of degree. And these phobias are treated with system, sin, Systematic desensitization. That basically, it means that uh, if you are afraid of flying, a psychologist uh, brings you to the airport and teaches you how to train your feelings or how your anxiety works and explains you uh, how to uh, avoid the negative thoughts. But it has to uh, f mm, be f face your fear in the reality. For example, if you're afraid, afraid of flying, you have to take a plane. And that is expensive. For example, if you are afraid of driving, you cannot go driving because the, the therapist cannot have control, etc. So uh, usually uh, therapists nowadays uses imagination, pictures or videos to, uh, to make the patient to imagine that they are in the situation that they are afraid of. They also uh, use relax relaxation techniques. You know, you can breathe in, breathe out, and muscular relaxation, so all, all kinds of tricks that therapists use to uh, teach people how to avoid their fear. But most of the, uh, most of the people doesn't go to, to, to treat their phobia because it's not a, a barrier on their life mostly. The, when, when it's really a problem for their life, they go through it, but often it's difficult to see the results because uh, you are not going to face your phobia uh, because you're not satisfied with the results usually. And virtual reality is supposed to change this paradigm. Virtual reality, there is a lot of studies that prove that virtual reality uh, is effective for treating uh, phobias. But uh, the reality is that only universities uh, does uh, studies, but at the end, they prove that virtual reality is helpful. But this virtual reality, virtual reality doesn't reach the market at all, and nobody uh, uses the virtual reality to treat real patients. They do studies, most of the 
university is the proof it works, but at the end it's so expensive to bring virtual reality to the common practice that uh, virtual reality was relegated to only studies till 2016. That is the virtual reality boom right now. There is a lot of devices on the market. So there is uh, Oculus, probably you all know Oculus, HTC Vive. Uh, Google is also investing a lot of money on, on doing daydream cardboard on your smartphone. Your smartphone can be a virtual reality device right now. And there is a coming a lot of more, more, more hardware that will make virtual reality a reality. So uh, the vision of Sayus was uh, to treat anxiety, phobia, anxiety uh, disorders and phobias easily at home. Uh, one of the founders, Danny on the right, uh, he had a phobia of uh, he was he had phobia to fly. He was not able to fly. Uh, his girlfriend wanted to go vacations and he was not able to go. Uh, to Tenerife or to uh, Ibiza because he didn't want to take a plane. He was doing uh, boat trips, stuff like this. And one day he said, okay, would be nice that I could treat my phobia uh, with uh, virtual reality in my home in the sofa, like some kind of tutorial to learn that uh, this can be cured. And his friend, Xavi, they both did the business plan. They are the business guys who the, they had the idea. But they, they are not developers. They didn't know how to do it. They didn't exist uh, anything at that time. So that we are talking about three years ago. So they had the, this idea. They put an a online advertisement searching for a developer. And then me and Victor appear. So we are the tech guys. Uh, Victor is the coder. He does all, all the back end, front end. And I'm the 3D developer. So I do all the modeling, also all this graphic design stuff. And the last member of the initial team was Edu. That uh, this is actually his LinkedIn <laughs> profile picture. I, he's the karate guy because he really likes karate. But he's also a psychologist, and he helped us to understand how uh, the the product has to be done for a, produ a proper uh, therapeutic use. So when I joined their team, uh, one week later, we we were selected to go on a health. Uh, Health startup, no health startup incubator. So we are considered health because we are doing virtual reality with a smartphone. So it's an app. So we were selected to go Baltimore. You know, Baltimore is supposed to be oh so cool. But uh, we are from Barcelona, going to USA. We will work together for a lot of months and we will learn a lot. But when I reached Baltimore, uh, I remember uh, that the Wire series that uh, was like some crazy city. That was, we were living in some crazy neighborhood, so it was a really fun time there, working a lot and dodging bullets. I always say that I was dodging bullets there because if you guys saw the wire, probably you will understand why. And there in Baltimore, we did our MVP, the, the minimum viable product. So uh, besides the software, we had the idea to make the software. We were using Blender, we were using Unity as a, as a game engine. And we need the hardware. So because most of the therapist uh, has a, a normal smartphone, we needed at least a, a minimum, minimum, uh, minimal powerful smartphone to run the VR. And that, that time, cardboard even didn't exist. So we print, 3D printed our first goggles. And the first kit was uh, a Chinese smartphone, really cheap. It was around 150 euros, the 3D printed uh, headset. That was around 10 euros the cost. And with that, we developed the, the platform. The platform is a website where you can, as a therapist, you can control what is happening inside the virtual reality. When you are uh, wearing the goggles, the, the therapist cannot play the, the pl press the buttons to, to do interaction. And the virtual reality is very limited. You cannot interact at all because there is no hand recognition, there is no controller, etc. So we wanted to to give the control to the therapy. So we built a platform to uh, launch all the events that the therapist will, will address to properly uh, make the patient face their fears. So it's, it's more complex than that, because there is a lot of, uh, a lot of um, studies behind. There's protocols, different ways to approach the problem. But I'm going to talk about more of the product, not that the therapy behind, okay? 
So there we built over three first -hand scenarios. These are uh, fear of flying scenario, that it's a plane. And that time, uh, I was alone. I was not able to build characters at all, so we think that, that there was little heads. We used uh, photographies, so we built everything based on photography, and we did a really low polygonal mode to, to model this to be able to run the virtual reality on a smartphone. We also did the fear of bugs with augmented reality, with a card you can track, and you see uh, through the smartphone spiders or cockroaches. That was the most common insects that people was afraid of. And we did the first acrophobia. So we did the, the first acrophobia that was a uh, New York Empire uh, State Building that was on top of it. And Travis <laughs> told us, I cannot use this. This is too extreme. I should start from the floor and go higher. So we think, oh, let's give them the, the most hardcore we can. This way we'll, they will be able to to cure people, but they say, no, no, this is not helpful for us. So right now, this is one of the highest level, and people don't reach this level because you won't be ever on that situation, mostly, and especially if you are afraid of AIDS. And with that product, we reached our first early adopter. That was David Van Manhoen. Thank you. And on Baltimore, so we, found, uh, we got our first funding. That was $50,000. Uh, and with that, we came back to Barcelona. After four months, we had our MPP. Uh, we learned about businesses, how to do, and we got our first customer there in USA. We had a, a, a plan. We needed a plan. We, we have low money. We are starting the, to run the business. We cannot spend the money without knowing what to do. And let's make a plan what we, want, what we need, what we want. We want more funding because with 50K, we won't survive at all. So we need to find more money until the product is uh, be able to, to, to maintain the, the company. So to get more funding, we learned that uh, investors usually want more uh, customers, more numbers, to prove that the business is, uh, will, be, will become true and will become profitable. So to get more customers, uh, we, we need to develop more product to make the better the product, make a better platform, more, more uh, scenarios, because if you go for a therapist and you tell, yeah, we have fear of flying, uh, we have acrophobia and uh, fear of spiders, yeah, but I, I, I have very few uh, patients with those phobias. I need phobias, of this kind of phobias, this kind of phobias. So we did a survey, we learned about what are the most common phobias, and, and we make we make a plan. We needed a bigger team, so we started searching for psychologists, modelers, unity developers, and sales team, because sales is, more, is one of the most important parts of the company. And then we found our first colleagues. We, they are, uh, they was uh, recent graduates, really young, and they give their, their best talent they could, and they joined the company, so we grow up a little bit. And we had limited time to build the product. We had to understand what is the difference between mobile VR than desktop VR. On that time, mobile was really, really limited. You cannot move on the scenario at all. You cannot only sit down, look around. You cannot interact. You cannot make doors open. You cannot use your hands at all. So knowing that, uh, we have to make the product so effective we can to don't make that the lags of the uh, mobile VR is very noticeable. Uh, we, we need to make somehow the product make shine the, the environments that you don't need to, to use interaction. So we have to make static environments. You cannot walk on the environments, because if you walk uh, without uh, wanting, you can get dizzy, stuff like this. So I don't know if you guys uh, used virtual reality before, but virtual reality tends to, be, tends to get a lot of dizziness. Especially if you are moving without knowing what, where you're going. So if you don't have control, you cannot decide where you are moving. And then uh, patients were, were getting dizzy. So at, at the, we, we decided to make them, the environments really static. Uh, also, we didn't have enough, enough team to make all the characters animated. So we chose to make all the characters really quiet and, and non-interactive for the first version of the product. Uh, no interaction at all. The, the user cannot interact. Who has the control of the platform, uh, who has the control of the virtual reality is the therapist on the platform. 
And we have to understand that the smartphone is very limited. We cannot do like a fear of public speaking with a lot of people and 200 people sitting and moving around because smartphone cannot do it. A computer can, but a smartphone can, cannot. We, we decided to, to invest uh, time on the smartphone because computer uh, hardware was really expensive and most of the therapies won't afford that for, for do treatments. And smartphones are quite cheaper. So the basic roadmap was to build the simple treatments uh, to board the most, um, the most common phobia treatments and later on start building the complex one. Okay? So one year after coming back to Spain, uh, we had around uh, 100 early developers, uh, early adopters, sorry, and we upgraded our kit. Uh, we stopped doing uh, the 3D printed version. We bought a Omido headset that was one of the best headsets on that time. And we upgraded a little bit the smartphone. The BQ Aquaris got a HD screen, so we upgraded a little bit without changing the price of the kit. But most of the early adopters was not paying anything. We was giving for free the, the kit for them to use and give, it, give us feedback. Okay, how to learn what you need, what are your needs, to understand uh, completely the, how they use the virtual reality, because we did in some way, because our, we are gamers, you know, we are developers, but we, they are not. They are usually uh, very, old, very grown up people, so they don't use technology, and most of them was the first time using technology. So we, we need to make it super easy for them. With all the new team we develop, uh, we grow up the scenes. This is a public, uh, no, fear of flying scenarios. There is four scenarios for the treatment itself. So there's the waiting at home when the, the therapist can make the anticipation of the, f of the fear when you're going to take a plane. For example, the basic, the basic uh, the scene contains like uh, a crash on, on the TV. There is a news that the plane crashed, some kind of stuff that makes people worry about the plane that they will have to take on the future. Then going to the airport, again, it's uh, anticipation, preparation. So you're going to the airport, you're going to take the plane, and the taxi driver is asking you stuff like, hey, where are you going? Or do you know that uh, airplanes, when, when it's raining, it's more proper to have uh, an accident, stuff like this. And then the boarding gate that you can see for the therapist can choose if it's raining, it's day, night, etc. And there is many, uh, if there is delays, stuff like this. And the airplane. The airplane itself, basically what the therapist can do is to make uh, air bumps, turbulences, choose the weather. There is uh, storms, no storm, day, night. Uh, People talking on the other side about uh, how, how scary is the takeoff, how is the scary the, the landing, stuff like this. We did uh, two more scenarios for relaxation because usually most of the therapist trains with uh, relaxation. The usual stuff is to build the island. This is not really uh, rocket science. The, uh, uh, a tropical island is the most common VR relaxation uh, environment that is out, outside right now. And underwater. Underwater, <laughs> there's a lot of people who say, come on, underwater is not relaxation at all, because I, I, if I'm underwater, I will feel that I'm drowning or something. No? But there is a lot of people who likes it. We also did uh, fear of driving, to drive on the city and to drive on the highway. So that, this was the most challenging, one, one, of, one of the most challenging VRs we did on that time, because the city was procedurally generated and on the smartphone, and we had a really tough mm, moments when we wanted to do the reflections on the mirrors to, to, for the user to see what is behind, what is, if there is other cars coming or not. And uh, later, on, the, on that time, we built the first, uh, the first VR with uh, animation and with characters. So I will explain a little bit how we did the characters. This was uh, Fear of Needles that, uh, that uh, has been used for, with uh, two hospitals and they did uh, treatments to people who was not able to take a blood exam. And after doing the treatment with the PR, uh, they was able. So we proved that it's effective, that people was able to 
to, to do it. Okay. So this is the first generation of uh, Sayus characters before we were using basically Mixamo with designation that uh, uh, libraries. We, need, uh, we wanted to do it super real, so we did a photo, photometry based. I don't know if you, you guys know what is photometry, but basically photometry is, uh, there's a, a lot of cameras here around me, and a guy press a button and they take a, a lot of pictures of me, and with photometry they can uh, guess what is the volume of myself. But the trick is that uh, the, the good studios they have, like 90, 90 cameras, that they do the, f the picture at the same time. And the tractors needed also facial expression, okay? But going back to the photometry stuff, we didn't have enough money to buy 90 DLR's camera. So to play this. Well. Uh, this is um, our workflow. So, for example, this is Danny, uh, one of the founders. We needed a casual guy with a, with a backpack. So, on the studio, we, we set up a proper lighting. He was staying here, and uh, I was with the camera, moving, doing a lot of pictures, trying to make a lot, a lot, a lot of pictures, so much of them. If you saw before, there, there was the cameras. So, with the software, we can determine uh, the volumetric. So this is the raw what we get from from the photometry. So I guess this is not a really this is open source. You can do it online. You can send the pictures uh, to Autodesk I want to TV and you get back this model. So the quality is quite good. If the guy doesn't move, sometimes if the guy moves then there is a it's not nice quality. For example, we have to do two pieces, the body one piece, and then the face in another piece, because to get the maximum quality possible. OK, you see. Then this is a high poly count. We, with Blender, use the scout mode, and we, uh, we clean a little bit. I will go forward, because it's a little bit longer. Yeah. Five more minutes. Okay. So we did our first rig. It was not really complex rig. We did uh, at the beginning. We was doing animation with the Blender, and these are more or less the results we got. There is facial expression we needed to do, and we built a basic head with all the shape keys, and then with that basic head we uh, make another shape key with give it. Uh, shape, different shapes of people, okay? To reuse all the work and not do the shape keys for each head. So for example, if you, you see there, there's the shape key Xavi O, uh, that is influence one, with the jaw open, it works. And then, we did uh, a few experiments to, with facial tracking, okay? Uh, this is real time, so therapists, the idea was that therapists could do talk inside the VR, but uh, at the end, uh, we decided to don't do it because therapists was not going to buy the proper camera because we were using depth camera to do this. But this was, run, was great for making faster the product. And this was the first version of the platform. We put a lot of effort to make it simpler. Later, I will do a demo if somebody wants to see it. I will, will, will be doing it real time. So one year after, we went again to USA on San Francisco uh, on a VR startup incubator, so more focused on VR. And we was out of the cave, you know. We spent one year working really, really hard. And when we was there, like, wow, there is a lot of people here, you know. And we found an uh, investor who think that our product is good and invest on us one, th one million uh, dollars on that time. And we came back again in Spain to be make it bigger, to make the product real. So we hired more people. This is actually the team on, of Sayus right now. We are based on Barcelona, as I said before. 
And on that time, one year ago, more or less, one and a half years, uh, Gear VR came out on the market, and we was able to afford uh, to give for free the therapist Gear VR. So we, we, we switched it from a crappy smartphone to a better smartphone. It was, we were happy because we were able to, to add more features. Uh, we improved the animation. We started using Rigify and combination Rigify with uh, motion capture systems. Uh, we started uh, implementing virtual rea uh, motion capture on over virtual reality. This is a little bit the workflow. I will do it faster because I'm running out of time. So this is a little bit of scene. So we could add more characters, more animations with better uh, memory consumption. So this is claustrophobia. Uh, it's an elevator. You don't see elevator here. So when the therapist can stop the elevator suddenly, all the characters react, and, <laughs> and they, they are supposed to make the guy be more afraid. This is another demo that we use facial expressions, and we also created a lip sync generation. So uh, the, the tool is available on Spanish and English. So the guy now has facial expressions. We have a liar that it's talking, and the lip sync is automatically generated. So we don't need to make it by hand, because there is a lot of dialogues right now. This is a. So this is from a straight record, a record, a recording from the headset. So this is a claustrophobia with MRI scanners. You start on the waiting room, and then the therapist can choose when you enter. And you see again this guy. This is one of the our developers. So what we did to so few tricks I learned. Uh, I don't know if you game, you, you're working on game industry, but it's better to use uh, light maps to not bake the lights on the texture. This was one of the um, atlas we had at the beginning. This is the atlas for fear of flying at home. All the light is baked, and you have to switch to night. We have to have another. This is daylight. This is not night light. So it's the same. Uh, Atlas, but with different lining. But at the end, with you separate the channels, you can have more resolution on the color and re less resolution on the light, and you can reuse the color to make uh, the lining change easily with with a set of uh, light map textures. Everything is done by texture. There is no real time lining on on a smartphone. So this is uh, how it looks without lining, and this is how it looks with lining. And I will talk a little bit fast about how we do it, uh, the animation. For example, this is, I don't know if you guys understand about a uh, little bit uh, Unity. This is on the left, you see the layers of the characters. This is one of the characters. It has a lot of uh, animations. And this is social phobia. It has to be a, a treatment that is 45 minutes. And we have to make 45 minutes animations for five different characters and with a very limited uh, amount of memory. So we did like a puzzle. A lot of layers. All the characters share the same animations. And they share the same facial animations also, but they have different lip sync. So for example, one character says something, and another character says something. Then on, on the head layer, we choose which character looks at what character. So it's really important that the characters look at each other. If you do, uh, with, you share the animations, they always look forward. But with programming, you can make the, the character lo look left or right. And this is one of the, well, for example, you see on the left, you, uh, the animators, did the animation, and later, they animate the scene by itself, launching uh, the state of the animation itself. So each character has five layers, and each of the layers says where what are they doing, what are their facial expression, or where are they looking. And compress everything. Uh, as an artist, I don't like compression because it uh, lowers the quality on overall, but at the end, you need, you need the product to run smoothly. So 
the animation is compressed, so it loses a little bit its quality, but you should compress always. And to CPU optimization, you need to reduce polycount a lot. So we use Blender is really efficient on that way. For example, for the body, you have a rigged body. You don't need to redo the body and redo the rigging. You can just decimate the body and you separate the, the head. And the, you can remove loop manually with the head. And you don't lose the, blend, the shape keys within Blender. That other software can, don't, don't give you that. For example, this is the face. You cannot, you, you don't lose the uh, shape keys. You only lo uh, uh, remove loops. And if you don't need the attractor to talk at all or to have a facial expression, you just do use the estimation that it works pretty good. And also for animation, it's very important to reduce the amount of bones. For example, if you, I want to make 100 tractors, I don't need 100 bones. If the tractor is sitting down, I don't, it doesn't have to walk. So more or less, the future of VR is here. I, if you want, I will talk deeply later because I'm really running out of time. And I would like to ask uh, Blender F uh, Foundation to add some features on the software. I would like a panel that it's create, a button that creates awesome realistic scene. And when you press it on, on the scene, then it bam, makes a scene that will be awesome for us. So if you can work on these guys, it will be amazing. It's done. It's done. Yeah, it's done, right? Then we have another two buttons that create a realistic character and realistic animation also. So thank you, guys. This is the team. And I hope you like the presentation. So if, if anybody wants to try the VR, I can run a demo here. I will be here around. So if anybody wants to try it, come to me and ask me. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs>